Welcome to our continuing series, Fine Poetry. Poems that touch deeper chords. Today, William Carlos Williams, 1883 to 1963, part one. And this from Wikipedia. Williams was born in Rutherford, New Jersey. His health began to decline after a heart attack in 1948 and a series of strokes. But he continued writing up until his death in New Jersey on March 4th, 1963. William Carlos Williams was a Puerto Rican American poet closely associated with modernism and imagism. His work has a great affinity with painting in which he had a lifelong interest. The poet and critic Randall Jarrell said of his poetry, quote, William Carlos Williams is as magically observant and and mimetic as a good novelist. He reproduces the details of what he sees with surprising freshness, clarity, and economy. And he sees just as extraordinarily sometimes the forms of this earth, the spirit moving behind the letters. His quick, transparent lines have the nervous and contracted strength, move as jerkily and intently as a bird." R. P. Blackmer said of William's poetry, quote, the imagism of 1912 self transcended. In addition to his writing, Williams had a long career as a physician, practicing both pediatrics and general medicine. He was affiliated with what was then known as Passaic General Hospital in Passaic, New Jersey, where he served as the hospital's chief of pediatrics from 1924 until his death. The hospital, which is now known as St. Mary's General Hospital, paid tribute to Williams with a memorial plaque that states, quote, we walk the wards that Williams walked, end quote. For extensive biographical data, please see Wikipedia. Probably William's most famous poem, The Red Wheelbarrow. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. A sort of a song. Let the snake wait under his weed, and the writing be of words, slow and quick, sharp to strike, quiet to wait, sleepless. Through metaphor, to reconcile the people and the stones, compose. No ideas but in things. Invent. Saxifrage is my flower that splits the rocks. Dawn. Ecstatic bird songs pound the hollow vastness of the sky with metallic clinkings. 
beating color up into it at a far edge, beating it, beating it with rising triumphant ardor, stirring it into warmth, quickening in it a spreading change, bursting wildly against it as dividing the horizon. A heavy sun lifts himself, is lifted bit by bit above the edge of things, runs free at last out into the open, lumbering, glorified, in full release, upward. Songs cease. Election day. Warm sun, quiet air. An old man sits in the doorway of a broken house. Boards for windows, plaster falling from between the stones and strokes the head of a spotted dog. The late singer. Here it is spring again and I still a young man. I am late at my singing. The sparrow with the black rain on his breast has been at his cadenzas for two weeks past. What is it that is dragging at my heart? The grass by the back door is stiff with sap. The old maples are opening their branches of brown and yellow moth flowers. A moon hangs in the blue in the early afternoons over the marshes. I am late at my singing. The poem. It's all in the sound. A song. Seldom a song. It should be a song made of particulars. Wasps, a gentian, something immediate. Open scissors, a lady's eyes, waking, centrifugal, centripetal. The tulip bed, the May sun, whom all things imitate, that glues small leaves to the wooden trees, shone from the sky through blue gauze clouds upon the ground, under the leafy trees, where the suburban streets lay crossed with houses on each corner tangled shadows had begun to join the roadway and the lawns with excellent precision the tulip bed inside the iron fence upreared its gaudy yellow white and red rimmed round with grass reposedly. The Uses of Poetry I've fond anticipation of a day or filled with pure diversion presently. For I must read a lady poesy the while we glide by many a leafy bay. Hid deep in rushes, where at random play the glossy black-winged mayflies, or whence flee hush-throated nestlings in alarm, whom we have idly frighted with our boat's long sway. For, lest, o'ersaddened, 
by such woes as spring. To rural peace, from our meek onward trend, what else more fit? We'll draw the latch string and close the door of sense, then satiate wind on poesy's transforming giant wing to worlds afar whose fruits all anguish mend. <laughs>